Hey, I'm Melly S, the Story Collector, and this is the Courage 1000 Project, the show where we share personal stories of inner courage from all around the world to inspire you to find your own. In today's episode, we're going to be talking to Dean Salakis, um, especially around the subject of fear being good because it stops you from doing stupid things, but also fear can hold you back from doing amazing things. You see, 30 years ago, Dean's mum was Patches the Clown, who catered for kids' parties. And it was her passion which led her parties to opening a small party store with her father. Now, in 2007, Dean and his brother took over the family business. And today they have over 40 employees, operate the market leader for party supplies online, and also have two bricks and mortar stores, of which one is Australia's largest. And for the last two years, Dean has been named in the internet retailing top 50 people in e-commerce and the Australian Retail Association Retail Leader of the Year. Now, before we jump into it, we just have to say a quick thank you to our sponsor, A Thousand Ripples Effect. A thousand stories creating healing ripples throughout the world and changing lives. So for more information on our episode sponsor, go to 1000rippleeffects.com. And now on with the show. First question I always ask is why do you want to share this particular story with everybody? Um, look, I mean, I, in general, I mean, I'm, I love sharing my story and um, you know, we've got a great story uh, to tell as well. It's a, it's a fun, fun business. You know, my mum started this business as a clown and, um, and the fun didn't stop there. So, you know, I, I always enjoy sort of telling the story and, and, and more, more particularly, I guess, I you know, enjoy sort of, you know, adding value to people or, or helping people with, you know, what we've learned along the way, which is a lot of things. We've made a lot of mistakes and I, you know, really get a kick out of, um, you know, I, I guess there's a few examples of where, you know, I've spoken at a conference or been on a podcast and then someone's picked something up and then years later come to me and said, oh, I put that, I put that thing that you, you mentioned into place and it was great, you know, and it's a real big kick. And then some of these people are, you know, multi-million dollar businesses today and, and they've gone way past where I am. And it's just, you know, really exciting to be able to help people and, and, and give back, you know, because I mean, I, I learn a lot from other people and, you know, that's part of the reason I've happy to do podcasts and all that sort of stuff. I like it. I like it. So you love sharing your story to help inspire others and encourage them to learn and grow from your own experiences. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. So where does your story begin? So, yeah, so like I said, my mum started the, the business as a clown. Um, and a very unusual trade. <laughs> yeah, it's not, not what you hear every day. And, and you know, she loved, she loved helping people have parties and, you know, back in the 80s, parties were a bit different. So she'd go there and, you know, bring the chocolate crackles and the fairy bread along and um, and help them sort of set up and then, do, then turn into a clown and do some magic tricks and all that sort of stuff. And then, um, you know, she would help them clean up. And that's how parties happened back then before party stores. But um, then, you know, she decided to open a party store. Back then, there, there, there really wasn't uh, many around, only a handful in the country. Um, and so she, yeah, she decided to open up a party store and, and sell party products. And, um, to be actually, she, well, I, I sort of backtrack a bit. She opened up a kid's party venue that, that did a bit of party supplies in the front and the, the venue didn't go so well. This was in the eighties when, like I said, people were having parties at home. So venues weren't a thing. And, um, so that the kid's party venue didn't go so well, but she was selling a lot of balloons. So, um, you know, she kind of transformed the business as you do as an entrepreneur and, started selling party supplies and it just, it just, you know, we've just gone from pivot to pivot, I guess, from there. And, you know, she started, she, 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 I guess, led the way with, you know, pivoting on it on her own. And then, um, you know, it was her idea to launch Australia's first online party store. What was it now? 30 years ago, or whatever it was in, in 98. And, um, and yeah, again, we, we transformed into a, uh, we've still got our bricks and mortar stores, but we trans- I guess we do more volume online. So we transformed into a, more of an e-commerce business. And uh, then my brother and I took over. We opened Australia's largest party store. We did another bricks and mortar store. And, uh, you know, depends on when you listen to this. This you'll, um, you know, at the, at the time I'm talking to you now, we, about two, three weeks ago, we opened up a pop-up Halloween store um, in Melbourne. So... You know, we keep um, evolving and adapting, and it's it's been a real 
fun ride, I would say. Uh, you know, it's. I, I think when you're at the time you're going through some of these things, like two weeks ago, I certainly felt, um, man, what, what the hell are we doing here? This is just full on. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and I've had them all along the way, but, you know, when you come out of it, like I have now three weeks later, and you look back and you say, man, that was, that was a fun ride. I'm glad yeah. we did that. Yeah. You know? So where has courage played a part in maybe your mum's journey and your own? Because it could not have been easy to start a business as a clown, especially in the 80s and being female. <laughs> yeah, good point, actually. I didn't even, I've never really even thought of the, um, the fact of a, of, a, of a female card. Um, but, you know, I mean, you know, here at the party people, I mean, you know, when it comes to, there's all, you know, there's a lot of stuff around at the moment around women and business and stuff. And I guess we've, um, you know, most, I'd say two thirds, we've done some numbers actually on it, but um, at last check, two thirds of the people that work here and two thirds of management are all female. And it's, it's not something we've done deliberately or, or even thought about. It's just something that's just, you know, whether they're female or male, it's the best people for the jobs. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, certainly for my mum, like you're right, back then um, it would have been harder for a female to make it on her own. And, um, you know, she, she, that's what she did. I mean, she, she came from that entertaining background and she had a real talent for, um, you know, entertaining. And um, then she opened the party store. Now she did that with her, grand, with her father, my, my, my grandfather. Yeah. Um, and, you know, with that sort of yin and yang where my grandfather had a certain skill set and she had a different skill set. Those, those two skill sets together made a real good team. And yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, she certainly, it would have taken a lot of courage to spend that money on, on opening a party store when my, and my grandfather had a real big go at her for it, you know, like saying, what the hell are you doing? Like, what's this, you know, clown is just a hobby, not a, you know, this, this can't be a business, you know? And yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, she, she's a very strong character and, um, and she, she was going to do it anyway. So she, she just went out and did it. And yeah, I think, I mean, you know, when, when we launched online in 98, that probably would have probably been a more telling sort of um, experience of, of, of her character in, in terms of courage. Because, you know, back then it was, you know, internet was nothing and everyone thought it was a bit of a joke. And um, and, and she, she had this idea to spend 10 grand on a, on a website. And... Um, my grandfather thought she was crazy and he was like, no way we're spending 10 grand, you know, we should spend more money in yellow pages than do anything. Why are we, why are we spending 10 grand on a, on a bloody website? And it's probably hard to see today why that is so significant. But back then, it, it was a crazy thing to be doing in business, to be spending a whole bunch of money on a, on a, on a, on a store when no one was shopping online back in 98, you know? She's really you know? courageous. She's definitely got that foresight as to what's going to happen in business and has just gone for it. Just yeah, and look, she may have been a little early, I would say, um, and, and that's probably part of the success as well. She was a bit, bit too early, but that allowed us to get online there. We were taking one order a week or whatever we were doing, and we were, we were happy every time we got an order. It was so exciting. Um, and, you know, we, we were able to evolve as the internet evolved. So as more people started shopping, you know, our 10 grand website became a much more sophisticated website, and that, that website became a 100 hundreds of thousands of dollar website over time and now we've got this you know very high tech uh, website but you know we didn't just go from zero to where we are now we've been able to evolve as the internet evolves so i guess being early is certainly um you know her courage in, in jumping online early has certainly been a real big advantage for us and i think it, it probably you know we've not not sort of deliberately or or consciously but i, I suspect it's probably some you know I'm not sure what the word for it is, but it's it's really set the tone for the culture in the company. That the way she she built that, and the way my grandfather and my mum handled that, and you know, my brother and I have taken over the business, and we've kept the same mentality and philosophies running. Where we, you know, we've we've taken a whole bunch of risks, and we've pivoted, and we've you know made changes, and we've adapted. And I think it's the reason you know that our retail business is is doing so well, and. and retail at the moment is you know falling down around us mm, and that's true like to have courage you do have to take risks and yeah. of it, your mum was a huge risk taker she was she was and i think it's calculated risk and i think you put some you know you put some thought into these things i don't i think i think taking risks blindly is, 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 is stupidity but i think if you um you know if you if you put a lot of thought into it and you've planned well and you've um 
done your homework, then, you know, this risk can pay off. I like it. I like it. So what about you and your brother? Was it a courageous choice to step into your mum's business or was it just a, this is happening? <laughs> yeah, and I'd say that's why maybe, maybe that's probably her rubbing off on me as a, as a, as a, as a son, you know, I mean, I, I've always been, I, I don't know if risk taker is the word for it, but certainly like I left school and I had this opportunity where I could have taken over the family business and not, I wanted to go to uni. Um, and I wanted to do a completely different career. I had no intention of getting into the business at the time. And um, I went in and got a job at, at Woolies and told them I was going to be CEO one day and all this sort of crazy stuff you do as a go-getter teenager. But I mean, I, I, my attitude there, I, from what, I, you know, what I've been told by the guy that hired me, um, my attitude going into that big company and my tenacity was the reason they hired me. And then, you know, I just went in there and I was all, all just... You know, I guess I took an entrepreneur approach to a large company. Yeah. And, um, you know, I wouldn't say that always works, but certainly with the right mentors and the right um, guidance, I was able to channel that enthusiasm um, and get some amazing things done there at Woolworths. And, um, you know, that, that kind of set. So, I, you know, I, 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 you know I, I did a whole bunch of things and was told not to do some things and still did them anyway. And, um, and then got rewarded for it because I won a whole bunch of awards and things that, that really is there. And I think that just kind of shows that, you know, that I, I kind of grew up with this, um, you know, mentality of giving things a go and believing in yourself and just giving it a shot. And, um, and you know, I, I guess I, I quit Willie's about five years into it, um, which was about 15 years ago. And again, you know, I was on a, I was uh, very well looked after there. <laughs> Um, I quit uh, quite a few times by the time I actually ended up leaving. I quit and then went part time and continued to consult and then eventually left. But I mean, I, I left a very comfortable lifestyle um, to, to run my own business, um, which you know a sensible person would be, you know, wouldn't do. It's just craziness to, to to leave what I had. But you know, I mean, I, I didn't want to die wondering. I thought yeah, I just wanted to give this a go, and I've got a real great opportunity here, and I'd rather you know. Um, you know, not, not be so comfortable and, and um, give it a go than, you know, go through life wondering whether I could have done something, you know, so significant. So, yeah, um, yeah I've really, really enjoyed the journey. And I think, you know, the one term I've heard someone say a few times is comfortable being uncomfortable. I think I've gotten to that stage now where I really enjoy being uncomfortable and putting myself in a situation. I mean, a podcast like this, um, generally speaking, I mean, I'm not a public speaker of, of I was hopeless at, at public speaking when I went through school. I mean, I was terrible. And, um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I've come through the last few years just enjoying doing you know, talks and podcasts, even though I hate it. But, you know, I, I, it, it's helped me grow as a person. So I really enjoy that. I think I've just created that, um, that attitude of, you know, just giving things a go now. And yeah. My brother yeah. and I both have the same attitude. And, like I said, we, you know, three weeks ago, we opened up a, a 3,000 square meter pop-up Halloween store, the first of its kind here in Australia. And wow. um, again, something very different, a different approach, but we've just, you know, we've, 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 we've done our research, we've done our, our homework, and we believe there's a big market here in Australia for Halloween and, and a specialist Halloween retailer. And yeah. um, we've taken that leap and um, so far it's going quite well, actually. I like it. I like it. So you're, you and your brother are obviously not afraid to make those courageous decisions yourself and channel your mum's energy and go, okay, we're just going to do this. And as you said, yeah. like, you're bringing your I, into it as well. You're not just doing it foolishly. You are. Yeah, I would say, yeah, and I guess that's a thing about being foolish. I think I, think I don't want to be a buzzkill on the, on, the, <laughs> on the sort of the courage side of things, but certainly... You know, I think one thing that I've, again, learned from a few mentors and things is that fear is actually important. It, it is important to, to recognize the fear and, and, and fear helps stop you doing stupid things. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and if you, but if you, if you recognize what that fear is and you, 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 know, you, you do your homework and you sort of really get to understand why you, why you have a concern about something, yeah. um, you can actually mitigate that fear or that risk. Um, and then, you know, it may, it may sound like courage. I guess you can call it courage. We look at it that we had an opportunity and we um, considered all the risks and um, 
mitigated what we could and accepted what we couldn't and made a decision based on that. And, yeah. I mean, it's called courage, but for us, it was just doing our, our research and making a judgment call with, you know, the information we needed to make us comfortable with that decision. Yeah. And that is the definition of courage. Courage is having the bravery to step forward, but accepting the vulnerability and the risk that comes with it. Absolutely. Because, yeah, otherwise you're just, you're like a bull. You're just charging headfirst into something, not knowing what you're running into. So That's you right. Like, fear, fear stops you jumping off a cliff, you know, and, and yeah. killing yourself. Yeah. If you, if you consider it right, you know, you'll, you'll, you know, you'll take those challenges on and you'll find a way to get through them. You'll get yourself a parachute, you know. Yeah. You'll make sure you're actually tied to the bungee before you jump. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so... That's what so through this whole journey, has your definition of courage changed any or do you find it's pretty set for you? Your mum's pretty much set the standard. Look, I think I probably just understand my limits and um, and my abilities better today than I did. And obviously I've grown as a person, so those abilities and, and limits have changed. But, um, yeah, I think, I've under, I think my appetite for risk hasn't changed. But yeah. my understanding of it has, which has allowed me to better navigate, you know, risk and, and opportunities. So when they come up, I mean, that, like I said, that Halloween story, I'll keep going back to it. But um, we jump in head first on that because we kind of have been here before. We've understood the challenge that we understood the risk. We understood that you don't know, you know, the, the big thing we always say is you don't know what you don't know. You know, we, we've assessed this so much and we understand what we're about to get ourselves into. And yeah. then... You got to assume it's going to be three times harder than we've already analysed because there's all these unknowns that you can, you know, unless you if you're arrogant, you, you you'll think you've got it all right and you go ahead first. And there's always stuff that comes up that you hadn't thought of. You can never possibly think of everything, um, and so we have this whole concept of you don't know what you don't know, and we, we build in a factor for that and build that into our decision making. But I think we understand um, ourselves and, and our business now much better so we're able to sort of get a feel for it. Yeah. how much you know i mean that, that that me just saying that about you don't know what you don't know is what stops everyone and that's what stops everyone from doing things because they're like oh this is going to be i don't you know i don't understand this and i'm not going to do it but um you know we we've had now a bit of experience with it and being able to sort of um estimate what is the amount of stuff that's really going to screw us up when we do something <laughs> Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love the fact that you can accept the risks and accept the vulnerability that comes with the fact that, hey, this may not work, but you're yeah. still taking that step forward. You're still taking the action. And to me, that is the definition of courage. It's the two things coming side by side towards that goal. And I think that's yeah, amazing. I'll say, I'll say something else that helps us is always like looking at what's the worst case and the best case. So I know it sounds so fundamental, but you know, sometimes when you look at some things, you're, you're, you're really worried about doing them. You go, what's the worst that could happen? Um, and either the worst that could happen is not so bad or it's so far-fetched that it will never happen. And you're like, look, highly likely the worst, you know, in a, in a, you know, the worst that we can be realistic, like then you've got to be realistic. You can't say, you know, you can't, you can't worry about getting hit by a bus tomorrow and build all those sort of risks in. But, you know, the worst that could happen is X, Y, Z, um, realistically you know and if you start asking yourself what realistically is the sort of the, the downside and then what's realistically the upside sometimes you look at things and go you know what there's really not a whole lot of risk here for us yeah um this is there's no risk yet and, and there's a real big upside and even the risks we know about we can mitigate them so let's you know what, what are we worried about here and then you start realizing that you're really fussing over nothing sometimes and i think that's a real good way to look at it sometimes is to look at what's the What's the, what's, you know, how could it all go wrong and how likely is that to happen? And sometimes you look at it and go, that's, that's just never going to happen. So yeah. I've got control of this situation and, and often you find that, you, you know, I think nine times out of ten, you're right. You look, one time out of ten, you get it wrong and it's a disaster. But, you, know, but you learn from that. <laughs> you learn from that. And it, but you've understood before going in that, that one, plus, one out of ten isn't going to kill you. Yeah. Um, because if it is going to kill you, you do need insurance, I guess. When I say insurance, I don't mean necessarily... Um, paying a, a broker to get you some um, insurance from a Zurich or one of those guys. I mean, you know, what, what happens if, if it all goes to crap? I mean, me and my brother run this company. If I was to get hit by a bus, for example, I've got insurance because he can run the company. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so that, that kind of insurance is what I'm talking about. 
I like it. I like it. I love it. I love your journey. I love how it all plays in, how the courage is kind of being passed down to you. And then you got to that point in your own journey where you went, no, I'm making this my own. And then fought against the family, went to Woolies, and then you've ended up yeah. there anyway. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I mean, I'm back here and I'm loving it. I mean, I, I haven't looked back. I like it. I like it. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Yeah, no, it's been great. Thanks for, thanks for the chat. Hope, uh, hope some people can get some, some great stuff out of our journey. And if they want to connect with you, where should they go? Uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm on, I think the best place is uh, LinkedIn, probably the best place to get me. Yep. Um, please tell me why you're connecting when you connect with me. Uh, I get so many connection requests and people just connect with you and, you know, you just don't know what's going on there. But so, yeah, please connect. Tell me why you want to connect. Um, and, um, yeah, that's probably the best. I mean, obviously, the business, the party people, you can check us out online. Um, there's an about page there, a bit more about our story. Perfect. Um, so if you want to do some research on what we've done, or just Google Dean Salakis or the party people, and there's, there's lots of uh, fun stories up there about, you know, be part of our journey. We've, we've done a lot of media and stuff like that. So it's kind of, awesome. um, yeah, been, been put out there. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for today. Uh, thanks for chatting. Do you feel you are destined to make an impact in this world, but are struggling to find the courage to share your story? Jump over to mellies.com.au for free training, presentations and videos, or simply stay tuned for the next episode of The Courage 1000 Project.